My name is Rochelle Manley, and I am a consultant for NWOET, a nonprofit that travels around to school districts in Northwest Ohio doing professional development on how to use technology. This is one of the videos in a series on Google Classroom integration. In this video, we will cover using a staging classroom to make assignments quicker and easier to create. In a previous video, I had briefly mentioned using a classroom filing cabinet. Um, I have renamed that to my filing cabinet, and I wanted to explain a little better on how to use that because this makes your life a lot easier in the long run. It takes a little bit of time to set it up, but I think it's worth it in the end. So let's go to my fourth grade uh, reading class here. If I uh, decide that I want to reuse a post from my classroom, from my filing cabinet, I'm gonna go to reuse post. I'm, you see that I'm in my filing cabinet here. I'm gonna scroll down and I'm looking for, I'm gonna click on this reuse this post and I wanna reuse that. So when you reuse a post, uh, you can just go in and retitle it. It has your instructions here already. I just gave a brief direct dis description of what I was doing or why I was doing this. Um, you would want to make sure if you didn't want it under fifth grade science anymore, you could X out of that. Choose a topic that is in this classroom. So you can click any of these. I'll just click material. Uh, if there's a due date, uh, you can do that. It, you cannot do a due date for material. So if I were going to do a due date, I could make this a weekly assignment. I could give it a due date. So I would need to make sure that I change that. I'll make it due next Friday on the 12th. Uh, you can set a point value or set it to ungraded. And you can assign. Now I'm going to X out of it because I don't want it to be there. So that's how you would do that. In a previous video, I showed you how you could reuse reading assignments and quizzes that you had already created and had stored in your staging classroom. Now I want to show you how you can use templates you have created to quickly and easily reuse without having to recreate each time. You do have to be careful when you're doing these templates that you update all the information before you post. If you forget though, Classroom makes it easy to go back and edit. So let's go back in and reuse a different post. This time I'm going to choose my video reflection template. Now I wanted to choose this one specifically because I want to talk to you about an option here. All right, so it's video reflection. You could click up here and put whatever video you're doing for the reflection. Um, you want to make sure that you insert the link for the video here. So I have that in all caps with a couple little characters on either side. Um, and I have a note here to myself in all capital letters to add a Google Doc and mark it so that each student uh, gets a copy. The reason I have that note there is I have a reflection paper attached to this. If I reuse this um, for, or if I've used this for an assignment previously, I don't want to mess up the student's work for that assignment. So if we reuse the same reflection paper, um, it you risk compromising their work. So I would X out of this, attach a different one, and then I could make sure that I've updated everything over here and assign. So that's a way that you could do that. Whenever you are reusing um, assignments though, make sure that you add a note to yourself or remember to reattach a different Google Doc. All right, I'm gonna click out of that also. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. All right, now if we scroll down here, just a little bit. You notice that I have this morning announcement section. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but I have little emojis that I code my work with. I get those from Emojipedia, and you can put in a search for book, 
and you have a whole option of different books that you want to use. So I like to go in, if you do that in your filing cabinet, and I'll show you that in a minute, um, I like to do this with the teacher reading so that way they know um, if I accidentally code a class wrong with the emoji. Let me show you down here. So this video reflection, this is under weekly assignment. If I decide that I don't want that under weekly assignment, that I only want like these types of assignments under here, I can edit that. I can change the topic or even create a topic, video reflection. And then save it. And then at some point, whenever I decide that I have a moment, I can put this video recorder right up here so that it's coded also. Um, if I decide that I don't like the order in which these are in, I'm going to go ahead and show you that you can grab a hold of this. I would always want my morning announcements at the top. It's the first thing that I want the kids to work on. So it helps not only the students identify the emojis, help not only the students identify, but they also help uh, you as a teacher to know if you have coded something wrong. So I'm recording this on a Friday. So if I go down to, or go back up to my morning announcements, if I decide that I want to go ahead and if, let's look over at my classroom first. I have a Monday morning template, a Tuesday morning, a Wednesday, a Thursday, and a Friday. Now, if I click in the Monday morning one, um, you can see that I tell them that they have technology today. Um, if I go into the Tuesday one, it's got the Tuesday information and so forth. So if I click there, um, go over here and I'm ready to make next Monday's uh, Monday morning assignment. So it's gonna be June 8th. So I'm going to reuse material. I'm going to go to the Monday morning template, reuse it, and let me show you what I mean that you need to make sure that you update everything. So after my little emoji, I'm going to say June 8th, and it's the Monday morning message, so I can take off the word template. So I have good morning class. You want to make sure that you insert the date here. So I put it in all capital letters, so it draws my attention to it. Oops. So June 8th, 2020. Now reminders. So in the assignment or the messages this week, I was telling them that their permission slips were due. Um, reminder, Friday we will be going on our field trip. And they'll know what that means. Uh, enter your Monday morning work. So you can tell them what to do. If they get done early, you can refer to something um, that's already in your classroom. And I'll go to the Friday announcement and show you that. So you just want to make sure that you update all of this. So you can put in the week number. So it's week number 34 assignment. Um, here you can just put a quote in. I tell them that it's worth one point because I actually want them to go in and mark it as done at the end of the day. So that way they are responsible for following directions and they need to go in and mark that as done. Um, so in a nine weeks, nine times five is 45. So that would be worth 45 daily points for them. I don't want it as a template anymore. So I'm going to cross that out or X that out. And I want this as a morning message. The due date, I always make the due date, or I would make the due date on the day of, so it's due at the end of the day. Um, one point, that's for all students. And instead of assigning, this time I'm going to schedule this because I want to make sure that my students that go in on the weekends and do some work, uh, that they are not seeing my Monday morning stuff already. So I'm going to make it for 7 o'clock a.m. on Monday, and I can schedule that. And now I can move on, and I can see that. And in another video, I'm going to show you the children or the student view. Um, 
and you'll see that they can't see that until Monday morning. All right, so that is how using your filing cabinet, it takes, or your, yeah, your filing cabinet. It takes a little while here to set these messages up. You see that I have templates for uh, Monday through Friday. I've got a question of the day that's short answer. I've got a question of the day that would be multiple choice. So I could have everything set up except for the question and the choices, the reflection template. And this is where we talked about uh, attaching a different file. So make sure that you're aware of that. And then a teacher read books template. So one more thing real quick is I, before I let you go for this one, I'm going to click on the Friday assignment. I'm gonna view the assignment into the instructions and you'll see that I was telling them that their permission slip was due uh, with their dollar so I had that on there for every day of the week uh, just different things I have um, for their morning work I've got please complete your weekly reading assignment if it's not done yet that way they have time to work on that in the morning work with your small groups and complete the weekly challenge so another assignment could be their weekly challenge um, if you get done with your morning work early, please look under the materials um, topic and quietly do one of those activities. So if I go back to, if I go back to my classwork and go here, I can go down to materials. And right now their only option is to go to abcya.com. All right, so that's an easy way to do your classroom using a My Filing Cabinet as a staging area.